Today I'm making mini blueberry fruit tarts and here are all of the ingredients that we need. And this is very, very overwhelming, I know. I just put it here just to be a little bit funny because I am a jokester. If you know me, you know that I'm always cr cracking jokes on people and stuff. But I just wanted to kind of over overwhelm you with all of the stuff here. And I will break this down so that it doesn't look like total chaos. But what we're going to be doing today, I'm, I've decided to do the pastry shell dough. I'm also going to do a French pastry cream and then we've got the blueberries and a apricot glaze that we're going to use here. So if I remove the blueberries and the glaze, now we've got our two separate things here. So we have the actual pastry dough and the pastry cream ingredients here. So what I'll do is, I'm going to stop the film, I'm going to rearrange my stuff. We'll start off with the pastry cream, I guess. That's what we'll do, yeah. We'll start off with the pastry cream first. We'll whip that together, then we'll do the dough, and then after that we're going to assemble it. So this is probably going to be a really long video once again. I, I try to keep my video short, but um, that's how it goes. So I'll rearrange all this and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so I've removed everything else and I only have the ingredients for our French pastry cream. So let's go over the ingredients now. I have one cup of milk, three egg yolks, I've got three tablespoons of sugar, that's regular white sugar, two tablespoons of cornstarch, two tablespoons of butter, and one and a half teaspoons of vanilla. So, though the, though, huh, so those are the ingredients for the pastry cream. So we'll start on that and then after that we are going to work on the pastry dough. So here are the ingredients for the pastry cream so let's get started. Alright what I'm going to do is I'm going to start my little induction cooker here and I'm going to get our one cup of milk going and while that's heating and I don't want this actually boiling so I'm just going to turn this down a little bit. So I'm going to take the three egg yolks and you often see me doing my pastry cream you know with a mixer so today I thought I would just mix it up a little bit <laughs> and just do it by hand so I'm just going to use a whisk here so I'll get the egg yolks we'll get all our sugar in there and we'll just get all that nicely combined I just want to show you that you can also do this by hand, you know, if you don't have a mixer, that you can do this by hand. There are many different ways that you can hold your whisk. You know, you can do that way, you can get it like this, you can like hold it like, you know, some people might hold like that, I don't like that. You can do it this way. There are different ways that they teach you in pastry school. Whatever way is comfortable, that's what you should use. So there we go. You can see that as you start incorporating air, the yolks start to become lighter in color. Hopefully the camera's picking that up. You can see that right there. There we go. I just want to keep an eye on my milk here. I can get that going a little higher. I just don't want to burn it. cornstarch. I'm going to get all of that in. There we go. And I'll just slowly melt, mix that in. And then I'll add in our vanilla. Always mix slowly when you're incorporating a little bit of liquid because you don't want it splashing on you. And I just have a tea towel under here because it's just easier for the bowl so it doesn't slide around as much. Alright, so that looks good. So I'm just going to get this going now. I'm just waiting for this to come up to a simmer 
So I'll be back in a second as soon as this milk is ready to go. We don't want this boiling hot, we just want it hot enough. We're going to pour it in here and we're going to stir very, very, very quickly. We're gonna, we want to whisk this as we're pouring the milk in. I'm starting to see some heat here, so I'm just going to be back in a second. And alright, so we're ready to go. I'm just going to turn this right down now. Okay, we can see the milk is ready to go, it's quite hot. So I'll get, I'm going to turn this off because it's just going to keep beeping because it's looking for a pot because that's an induction cooker that I'm using. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pour in very, very slowly. I don't want to shock the egg, I don't want to turn it into scrambled eggs. If you do have a mixer, it's good to use a mixer because you're going to incorporate more air than I'm doing right now. So I can kind of go a little faster. I love this pastry cream. I use this all the time. I make this at least two times a week. There we go. Beautiful. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this onto the burner. So I'm going to get that in there. I'm going to get it going again. And I'll move this into camera view here. There we go. And now what I want to do is I want to constantly whisk this. I just want to make sure I get everything out of my bowl. There we go. Beautiful. So right now what we're doing is we're introducing heat into the mixture. And we just want to wait until you start feeling it getting thick. You don't want to have your element on high. So when you're working, when you're doing this on the stove, do not put your element on high. You will burn the bottom of the pastry cream. Constantly stir, do not stop. Just going away to do something for two seconds and you will burn this pastry cream. You want to constantly keep it going here. And I'm just waiting for it to thicken. At this moment it still isn't thick yet. Now it's starting, I can see it at the bottom, it's just starting now. And if you find that all of a sudden you're getting too hot, just lift your pot right off the element. The reason why you're hearing beeping there is because the induction cooker is noticing that there is no pot on here anymore. So there we go. The induction cooker will actually stop heating if you remove your pot. And there we go. That's off. I turned it off. And you can see now, it's already nice and thick. And at that point, this is done. So that's it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to transfer this to a, another bowl. So I'm just going to go get my bowl and I'll be back in a second. Okay, I've got my bowl. And so what I want to do now using a spatula, because I want to make sure I get all of that goodness, and I'm going to get it right into a new bowl here. And then as you've seen me before, what I do is I take some plastic wrap and I put it right onto the surface of the pastry cream. And what that does is it prevents it from getting a skin, forming a skin. If you just take your plastic wrap and put it over the bowl, you will still get a skin. All right, and we just take our plastic wrap, and we'll just get it right onto the pastry cream. All right, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to start working on our actual tart dough. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to pop this into the fridge. I'm going to clean up the work area and we will get right back to working on our actual dough.
The last thing we're going to do is we're going to get our butter in. That's our two generous tablespoons of butter. And we're just going to get that all incorporated. That's, that's going to melt right in there. And that's it for the pastry cream. Just use my whisk to get that right in there. And there we go. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go over the ingredients for our pastry dough. I have two cups of all-purpose flour, three quarters of a cup of icing sugar, one egg, I've got a teaspoon of salt, one tablespoon of vanilla, and one cup of room temperature butter. Now, if you are using salted butter, just remove the salt. Don't use the salt. If you're using unsalted butter like I am, then just add in your salt. So those are the ingredients. Let's get started with our dough. All right, we'll just get our bowl in place. I'm gonna put in the softened butter. I'm going to crack our egg. I'm just gonna get it in there. There we go. Make sure I don't get a shell in. I'll pop that in. And I'm also gonna take all of our sugar and get that there as well. And what we want to do is we want to cream this all together. There we go. So I'm just going to let this go for about a minute or so just until we get it nicely creamed. All right, that's nicely clear, creamed. I'm just gonna add in our vanilla and then the salt. There we go. And we're just gonna start adding in our flour now, which is the last ingredient to go. three additions. This is a really, really good dough. Once you start using this, you're going to really like this. And it's good because it holds up very, very well with shell ingredients that are moist like pastry cream and other types of fillings. It's a more of a robust type of shell. All right, that's good. All right, at this stage, we're just going to make a disc out of this and we're going to put it away in the fridge to chill. I'll be back in a second. All right, we just want to get this down. We want to chill it in the fridge for about an hour. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to get it all down on the plastic wrap and I'm going to create a disc out of it just so that it's easier to roll later on. What I like to do is get a second piece of plastic on the top. It just makes it easier. Flatten it out into a disc. and then into the fridge for about an hour. So I uh, will see you in a bit. All right, our dough has been chilling for about an hour or so. And today we're gonna to be doing mini blueberry fruit tarts. So I don't really need to roll this whole thing out. All we do is just take a little bit of our nice dough here. And you're really, really gonna love this dough. Once you try this recipe, it's gonna be one of your favorite doughs, I guarantee it. So I've got a little bit of dough. What we're gonna do, I'm going to roll it out. And I just wanna show you the little tarts that I have, these little 
tart pan little things, little tart shells. And what's great about this dough is that because there's so much butter in here, when these are baked, they just pop right out. So after they're baked, you just tilt, just tip them over and they just, the dough just pops right out. It's beautiful. So these here are really one, one bite, maybe two maximum. You can see how they look here. I'll show you a closer up view later on. All right, so that's what I'm using here. I don't know how many I've got, a few, maybe nine. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna roll up my dough. I'll just roll this out. Oh, I do love this dough. Now, since these shells are so small, there are different ways that you can get your dough in here. You can just roll it out like this and then cut little circles out and pop it in there and get it in that way. Or you can make little balls of dough and squeeze the, the, the dough into the little shell. I can show you different ways, I might as well. So I want it a little thinner than that. Just get it nice and even here and uniform. There we go. Beautiful. A little bit more flour. Okay. So I'll just show you one of the ways that you're going to see a pastry shop do it. They'll just take the little shell like this, you're going to lift the dough up, you're going to place it like this, you're just going to squeeze it down and then just gently pop it in there with your thumb and just go like that. So you can do it that way. I'll do another one like that. This is really the most efficient way to do it. So you just kind of break it off with your thumb just like that. It's very very quick and you just push in very gently otherwise you will tear it. And if you do tear it, you can just take another little piece and just fill it in. There we go. Just like that. And I know what you're thinking. You're saying, I can't see anything. Zoom in, zoom in. Okay, let me zoom in. So I've just zoomed in a little bit here, right here. So I just place the dough over. Just like that. Just like that. And just gently push with your thumb or your forefinger and you see how easy that is? Isn't that nice? Just like that. I'll do another one like that. So you're gonna grab the dough, just place it over and then just push. That breaks it on there. You can see that this is quicker than taking circles and cutting them out because that's an extra step. When you're in the back in a pastry shop, things have to be done very quickly and this is the most efficient, quick way to do it. You could, you know, take a little circle, cut it, and then do it that way, but this is just the easiest way. The other way that I was going to show you was that you could take a little piece of dough, roll it up in a ball, so, but you see this is, again, this is just too time consuming. You can take your ball of dough, place the ball of dough, and then fill it up this way as well. If your hand gets a little bit, you know, this is there's a lot of butter in here, and I've got two studio lights going here, so it's it's very warm in here. So then you can just push it up against the sides like this as you're going around, just like that, and then just break off the pieces, and there you go. You can do it that way as well, but you can see that it's just not as quick. So that's the other way. The other way is to just take a little circle and cut it. I'll do that way right now. I'll find my little circle cutter. Okay, so I've got a cutter here. If you don't have a cutter that size, to cut one like that, let's try one like this. We'll just take it like that, place it in. I mean, you can do it this way too. Like I always say, you know, there, in different areas where you're doing things, there are no rules. So there we go, just like that. 
you don't have something like this, you can just use a piping bag tip, just like this. So let's try that one. This is going to be a little bit small. Now we can take another one and just pop it in there. You're going to see that this is too small though. Depends on your piping bag tip. You know, that's just too small. You can see that right away. So let's see how quickly we can do this. So we get a little bit of our dough. We lift it up just the easiest way. Just go around, push, and gently push. And there we go. See that? And that's the way to do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue on doing these. Well, how many do I got left? I've got two more. So I'll finish those off. What we're going to do, we're going to grab a fork and we're just going to dock these. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking a fork and just doing this. And what I want to do now with these is I want to chill them. So I'll just go around like this. There we go. I've got two more. Let's just do the two more and finish up and then I'll, we'll get these into the fridge. And what I'll do now, I'm just going to place them into a little container here, another tart pan that I have. This is just so I can easily get them into the fridge. Just like that. Let me just zoom out a little bit. So this is just a little 9 by 9 tart shell that you've seen in some of my other videos. So there we go. Just makes it rather easy to pop these into the fridge. So I'm going to pop these into the fridge for about 15 or 20 minutes and then I'm going to bring them out and then we're going to head over to the stove and we'll bake them. Alright, so here are my tarts. They're all nicely chilled. I had them in the fridge for maybe about a half an hour. I'm now going to pop them into a 325 degree oven for about maybe 10 to 12 minutes. I'll tell you exactly after I've done them. These are extremely small, so they're not gonna take very long to bake. So I'm gonna pop these in and I'll be back in a bit. All right, so my little tarts have completely cooled now. I had them in for 14 minutes in the oven. And let's just see, there we go. Usually they come out pretty well. There we go. All right, so what I'm going to do now is we're going to get on to the next step. I'll just unmold all those and I'm going to get my pastry cream into a bag, into a piping bag, and we're going to be getting on to the next step where we're going to fill these up with nice pastry cream. All right, I just wanted to show you that before I put the pastry cream into my piping bag, this is a step that you don't have to do, but what you can do is you can just push your pastry cream through a sieve which will just remove every little bit of clumping that may have happened when, when it was in the fridge. So I'm just slowly pushing this through. You don't really have to do this, but if you wish, you can do it. Just takes a little patience, just slowly push it through. Just like that. There we go. And then just clean the bottom of your sieve to get all of that goodness because you don't want to waste any of this. This is an optional step. Some of you may want to do it. Some may not. And there we go. And now that's ready for the pastry bag. Alright, I have a Wilton disposable pastry bag here. And I'm using a Wilton 2A tip on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get some of the pastry cream into our little pastry bag. There we go. So now we've got the pastry cream in our piping bag. And I'm just going to put a little bit in each one. Oh, that looks good. And there we go. Alright. Our next step is to get our little blueberries. And you just want to put on as many as you want. You can go with one, you can go with two, depending on the size. You can go with three, four. 
I like to fill it right up on the top. So just kind of go through and get the berries that you think will fit perfectly on the top. There, just something like that. There we go. So the last step that we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting on some nice apricot glaze. And we'll get to that in a second. Alright, there we go. Maybe a very tiny one just to get that little edge covered up. There we go. Beautiful. Alright, so on to the next step. We're going to glaze all our little tarts. Alright, so I have my apricot glaze here and I will have a link to a recipe that I did just to show you how I made this out of apricot jam. It's a very simple process and I'll put a link at the end. And what we want to do now, is I just want to dip this, dip my pastry brush into the glaze and you just want to get a little bit of glaze onto each little tart. Just like that. Just hang on to your tart so that they don't flip over on you. And how much glaze you use is up to you. You really don't want to put that much, but just enough. And what this is going to do, it's going to give a little bit of sweetness to the top of the bite when you bite into it. It's also going to protect the blueberries. And it'll also give a nice little shine to them. And really give them that finished look. Oh, that looks good. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep continuing, uh, I'm going to keep going at this. And I'll be back in a second. And so there we have it. These are my mini blueberry fruit tarts. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time.